Designing and printing your own 3D models is one of the coolest things you can do with a 3D printer because you get to see something go from just in your head to being made physically on your printer. I recently made a video about considerations you should use when you design your parts so that way you don't have to use supports when you print them. And one of the consequences of designing like that can mean that your parts have to be in multiple pieces and you have to attach the pieces together. There's a few ways you can do that, and I want to show you guys some of my favorite ways to do it, including magnets, heat inserts, and others, so that way you can take your multi-part designs and put them all together. I'm Jake with Butter Pockets, and we'll jump into it right after I tell you about today's sponsor, PCBWay. If you're working on a project and you need great quality parts and quick, check out PCBWay. They have so much that they can do, including CNC machining, 3D printing, and tons of materials, including metal, PCB assembly, PCB fabrication, and much more. Their order forms are super simple, and you have so many options that you can choose from. So if you need something for your project, check them out at my affiliate link below, and you'll get $5 off your first order. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to Hey guys, I'm editing my video, and I'm noticing that the audio quality is like really inconsistent. Um, there were a bunch of clips, especially like pre nine minutes where this mic actually wasn't on and it was using my camera's audio. Um, I tried to edit it to make it sound a little bit better, but it kind of doesn't. So from like zero to nine minutes, the audio is a little weird. And then after nine minutes, it should sound good. Um, but sorry about that. And I'll try to make it better for the next video. So I first want to start off by showing you guys some ways that don't involve glue. And the first one and the one I use most often is magnets. So I have two different types of magnets. I have these little round magnets, and I have these rectangular magnets. And they both serve different kinds of purposes, and one is easier to get in places than the other because they're different sizes. And I have a couple prints here that demonstrate that. So these are stuff that I sell on my Etsy, they're little Pokemon uh, trading card game dice boxes, that's kind of irrelevant, but um, the top and the bottom are connected the magnets. Another important thing to mention when I do these kind of pieces, and especially with the magnets, is that each of these parts has a locator piece. So there's a ridge on this section, and let me see if I can. So there's a ridge on this bottom section, and there's a valley on the top section, such that when they magnetize together, you can't slide it around or move it. So the way to start this is to take your magnet and measure it. So take some calipers or a ruler, and measure the three dimensions of the magnet. So we'll measure the long dimension, 19 millimeters. I'll write that down. The short dimension, about 4.8. and the thickness, about 1.8. And it can be tricky because it's a magnet and the calipers are obviously metal, but it can help you because it'll just clamp it together for you. So once you got that, we can jump into Fusion 360 and I can show you how I oversize and use these in my models so that they're printable. So coming into Fusion 360, I'll show you how I design these into my models so that way they can be 3D printed. The procedure should be the same in any other CAD program, but I only use and I only know Fusion 360, so you should be able to translate this over. So we're just gonna start off with a simple sketch and just draw a simple shape to demonstrate this. So I'm gonna make like a 25 by 25 millimeter square. And the measurements that we took, it was 19 millimeters in the long direction and 4.8 millimeters in the thin direction. Um, the thing is, nominally, these are supposed to be five by 20 magnets. So I know that some of the magnets are closer to 20 millimeters and some are closer to five. Um, I would probably use the nominal or just test this yourself and just figure out what size works for you, but you're gonna wanna oversize them for the 3D print. So in my testing, I know that about 20.2 in the long direction and 5.2 works for me. So we'll just draw this. So 20.2 and 5.2. You could add some constraints and some sketch lines and put this in a specific spot, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And I'm actually gonna thin this up so it's less material to print, so we'll make this maybe 15 millimeters. So using this, we can finish it. 
and we'll just extrude a little rectangle, including all of the space. And we'll just make this three millimeters tall. We'll show the sketch again. And then here's what we're gonna do with the actual magnet. Uh, I kind of did this upside down so we can do it this way. So we're gonna extrude just the magnet section. And what you're gonna wanna do is set it at an offset that is my, uh, 0.4 millimeters. So what you'll see is now it is 0.4 millimeters under the surface. And when we took our measurements, the distance was 1.8 millimeters in thickness. I'm going to set that to 2.2. So now looking at this, you can see that there is a 0.4 millimeter gap between the top surface and where the magnet starts and finishes. The reason we do this is because 0.4 millimeters, if you print at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, is two layers. So what this will do is we'll put a pause in the print and it'll allow you to put the magnet in and then two layers will be printed over it. You could do more layers, but what it's gonna do is decrease the strength of your magnet because now if you do two parts and this is two layers under and your other part is two layers under, it's gonna be four layers of material between the magnets. So you're already having 0.8 of a millimeter gap in between the magnets. And if you do multiple magnets, they'll still be plenty strong and you could choose to add more layers if you wanted, but I think two is the minimum, and it usually turns out well for me because this actually isn't a bridge. The magnet is gonna be in there and it won't actually have to bridge because the material can just lay on top of the magnet. So now that we've embedded it in there, we can look at it if we want to. Um, we can create a section analysis. So if you want to, we can look at it. And you can see there is a hollow cavity inside of this that the, will accommodate space for the magnet. So from here, I'll just export this and we'll print it. Now that we're in Prusa Slicer, we can go ahead and slice this little piece. And then we can see if we drop down two layers, there's the hole for the magnet. So what we would do is in the slicer, anything based off of slicer, so Prusa Slicer, Bamboo Slicer, Super Slicer, it's all gonna be the same. Um, but in your slicer, there should be a way to add a pause print in the middle of the print. So what you would do is go to the layer where it does the first bridging over the gap, right click here and add a pause print. You can say whatever you want. You can say add magnets. And now the slicer will stop as soon as it starts this layer, you're able to put the magnet in and then it will print over top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this model and then you'll see what I'm so before we get into this, uh, earlier I had said methods that don't involve glue. I meant to hold the two pieces together. Obviously the magnet's going to hold the pieces together. You are going to need glue for this. So what you would do is just put a little dab of glue in. And this is just so the uh, metal in the hot end doesn't pick the magnet up when it goes back over it. And then drop your magnet in. And it should magnetize a little bit to the print bed. And then you can just resume your print. I printed three just so um, it would have multiple to print at one time and the one wouldn't get messed up. And uh, I'm not going to put magnets in the other two. And then the print will just resume. And then you can see over the actual magnet, the top surface doesn't look too bad. And I'll zoom in. Uh, these prints don't look all that great to begin with, I'm not really sure why. But compared to one that doesn't have a magnet, it looks roughly the same. And then you can see that there is a magnet in there and the part sticks to the magnets. One thing I do recommend is to have a master magnet of sorts. So I will keep a magnet kind of on my bench in a known position. And that way I can always tell which way the magnet should go. And then I can always put the magnets the same way in my prints so that way Multiple prints can all work interchangeably with each other. And I actually have this note up here to remind myself because I usually uh, mark the magnets with some Sharpie is I have this note blue down bottom. So I will mark, I will mark them with a Sharpie and I know the blue side goes down in the bottom side of the parts and the blue side goes up in the top side of the parts. You're able to order magnets on Amazon or even AliExpress. I ordered a big thing of like 300 magnets on AliExpress, thinking, well, if they show up, good, and if they don't, oh well, and they totally showed up. 
and they're totally the same quality of the ones that I got on Amazon, which are made in China anyway, so it's probably the same magnets. But the next thing I want to show you guys is heat set inserts. And these are really neat, and if you've ever built a Voron, you've probably already used them. But if you haven't, what they are, are these little brass inserts that you use a soldering iron, and you're able to push these in and melt the plastic, and then you have a nut that is embedded into the plastic. Let's do a close-up here if you've never seen one. So this is what they look like. It's just a little brass thing with some knurling around the edges, so that way when you melt it, or you get it hot and it melts into the plastic, and it cools, it stays. And then, it's hard to show, but there's threading inside, and these are M3 sized. And so for these, you will need a soldering iron, and you can get these special little tips that are meant to insert these into plastic, and that'll help you a lot in doing these. So this is what it looks like when you do a part. You can see the little piece is melted in there. And then once it's melted in, you're able to do an M3 screw with this one specifically and screw that in. And then if you had a second part, you would have fixed them together with the screw. They hold in pretty well. And even in this orientation, which uh, technically if you screwed the screw in, it would pull on the thing in the plastic, it'll still hold quite well but the best way to do them is the other way. So from this side, where it would pull it into the plastic, and you're able to tighten these down pretty tight and they won't pop out or deform your part. And these are a great way to do multiple parts together. And see, it's pretty tight in there, as tight as I can get it with my fingers, and it's fine. So with that, we'll jump into Fusion 360. I'll show you how I size these things and the holes in order to melt them in. And then I'll show you actually installing one with the soldering iron. Arguably one of the best places to get these threaded inserts is from CNC Kitchen. I reference him a lot, he does a lot of really good stuff. But he sells um, these on his website and they're produced with cadmium free, lead free, and they're really nice quality. The ones I have, I don't think they're from him, but if I was gonna order some more, I would order them from here. And on his website, he even shows you the sizing and he shows you where the blind hole and the through hole and what the sizes of those should be. So that way you can model these into your CAD software fairly easily. And he has this whole dimension size here for you and makes it super easy. So for the ones that I have, uh, let's go into Fusion 360 and I'll show you what I did. So for the ones that I have, I have their dimensions and we're gonna start off by doing a little simple sketch like we did previously with a little test structure so that way we can just test this out. So I make a little 20 by 20 square again and I'll extrude this we'll say six millimeters. Then we need a sketch to locate where the hole is gonna be. So I'll create a sketch on top and I'll just do a line. This doesn't have to be precise, just from the middle here and kind of towards the middle here. Now that that's done and we have a point that we can attach this hole to, there's a hole tool and you can push H in Fusion 360 or find something similar in your CAN software. So we'll use this and we'll use this point that we just made. For extents, I'm gonna set this to all so it goes all the way through the part. And then I'm gonna set the hole type to counter bore. Hole tab type is simple and the drill point is flat. Uh, this depth is, again, it's all, so I wanted to extend all the way through. The counter bore diameter for my part is 4.7 millimeters. The counter bore depth is 3.8 and the total diameter of the through hole is 3.5 millimeters. Oh no, excuse me, it's 3.4 millimeters. So once that's done and you hit okay, you will see this hole that has that stops and you see the total diameter. And so the little threaded insert will sit on this section and it will melt into this. And then we're able to thread an M3 screw through. So what I'll do is I'm gonna extrude another square so that way we can affix the two together. So now that we have two, I'll print these and then we'll install the threaded insert into the one part. All right, now that the part is finished, we have a perfect hole for the threaded insert. And if you do it right, it should just sit right in there and stay for you so that way you can solder it. This soldering iron doesn't have any temperature control. And the reason I use this one is because it's the only one that this tip actually fit in, my other uh, weller, it didn't fit. But the way I do it is since this doesn't have temp control, 
I literally just plug it in and sit here and wait until it gets hot enough to melt the plastic. So I just sit here and wait. All right, it's getting hot enough to melt the den and you can see it going lower. And then it'll melt right in. And then when the tool is flush with the plastic and you can feel it hit the bottom, I stop, pull it out, and then you're done. If I was doing multiple, what I would do is let this heat up a little bit more and then go ahead and unplug it. And then I could do a couple and then I would uh, plug it back in and let it get hot. If you have a temperature control one, I would follow whatever temperature is hot enough to melt plastic and whatever the manufacturer of the threaded insert recommends. Now that it's in there, we can take our M3 screw, our other piece, and we can attach them. And there you have it. These two pieces are joined together with one screw. And obviously if you would get an appropriately sized screw, it would look better than this, but this is just a simple demonstration. For these, you would probably want to use locators as well, or else the part will spin. And you could either print what I showed on the magnet print, or just use two of these, and then it obviously can't spin or rotate. So threaded inserts are a great way to make a secure bond between two parts. I'll link CNC Kitchen's website in the description so you can pick some up. You could also get them on Amazon. One thing to note is if you let your soldering iron get too hot, some of the filament that you're melting to put the threaded insert in can come up through the middle and then it can block the path, but you can just take something and stick it through there and, and clear out the, the threads. The next thing I want to talk about are dovetail joints. So I actually have a video about this. It's one of my first videos on YouTube, um, but it covered more than exclusively dovetail joints. So I just want to show you how I designed those in Fusion 360. We'll print apart and we'll put two pieces together. All right, now that we're here in Fusion, we'll do the same thing. We'll just create a simple sketch. So I'll start off with a rectangle, again, probably about 20 by 20 millimeters. And then what I'll do is I'll use some lines and just draw a trapezoid. It doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to get the angles right. We can put some constraints on it after the fact to get it right. So now that this is drawn, we can do some dimensioning with D in Fusion 360 and your other CAD software, find a way to do some constraints. And what we can do is constrain these angles to whatever we want. I'm just gonna use 60 degrees here. Do 60 degrees here. And if we try to add a constraint to this corner, it'll over constrain the sketch because the angles all have to add up to 360. And since we already did 60 and 60, these are automatically 120. So we won't do that. Then we can define the distance between here and here. We'll just make this say five millimeters. And then what we can do is attach this over here and we have our dovetail joint. So I'll use this midpoint tool. You could do this manually, however you want to do it. And I'll attach the midpoint of this side to this square, and then it's attached. And then what we can do is just draw another square. That's also 20 by 20. And then we can have two pieces that all align together. I'll finish the sketch and I'll extrude this half, do it say two millimeters. And then what we need to do is extrude the other side. So we'll do this. We'll also do two millimeters. We'll set it to new body and then we'll hit okay. So now we have two bodies that would slot together with the dovetail joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide the first body and then I'm going to offset these three sides by 0.1 millimeters. 0.1 will give you a pretty tight fit, and especially if your printer has good tolerances. If not, you can try 0.2 or 0.3, whatever works for your printer. So I'm just going to offset these faces 0.1 millimeters, and you could obviously do this in the sketch itself, but I find it easier to do it this way. So we're going to offset at negative 0.1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it all of the corners inside of the dovetail joint. So we can hide this body again. We'll fill it all these corners. We'll do one millimeter. Switch to the other part. Now, if we show both pieces, we can see that they align pretty well. And you know what, actually, before we continue, um, these edges need to be offset as well. So I'm actually gonna roll this back. Before we did the fillets, 
hide this and offset these faces as well. And that's just to give some clearance so the parts actually fit together. All right, now that these are designed, we'll print them and we'll see how it looks. And now that these pieces are done, you can see that they slot into each other. And there's actually still quite a bit of tolerance. They don't slot into each other perfectly, but you can mess around with it. So that way you can find tolerances that kind of snap in together. And the more material you have, the more friction there will be. These aren't limited to just in plane, which I'll show you. Um, and these make for great sliders. So I designed a drawer in that previous video and they slid on the dovetail joints. And these are a really great way to affix things if you don't wanna use anything extra. If you want to, you can use glue and permanently affix them, but it's a great way to just do something that's only printed. You're not limited to dovetail joints within the same plane as well. You can also do them at 90 degrees to each other for parts that wanna connect on an angle, and you can do them in this way. Uh, the way I would do this is I would extrude two things 90 degrees to each other, this, one with a dovetail and one without, and then you can just subtract the parts from each other and then they fit and then the same way offset the faces and fill it everything and then you'll have it looking like this. The last thing I'll talk about is using a locator if you want to glue two pieces together. If you have two 3D printed surfaces and you want to glue them together, you should definitely not do two flat surfaces because these will glue together, but then you're going to rely on the glue stopping them from twisting on each other and separating. So what you would do is add a locator pin in between the two that would slot into each other and then you glue them together and then you don't have to worry about them rotating. So let's design one of those in Fusion 360, print it up and see how it goes. So we're going to do the same thing we did before and start with a sketch and do a simple shape. I'll again do a 20 by 20 millimeter patch. And then I'm going to find the middle. And then what I will do is I will do a polygon. And for this, I'm going to use a hexagon. So we'll do our polygon from the center. And the size for this doesn't really matter. So I'll just drag it out and then we have our polygon. So we'll finish the sketch. And what we'll do is extrude the square itself down two millimeters. And then we'll extrude the polygon up, we'll say two millimeters. And then we'll extrude another part that is another square And I will start it from the base of this one and go two millimeters. And we'll set this as a new body. And then you can either extrude the polygon up again, or you can just combine the two bodies to remove the polygon from the other. And we'll just uh, keep component. So now we have one with a hole and one with a locator. And actually what I'm going to do is extend the other one an extra millimeters. That way it doesn't go all the way through. So we'll just extend this three millimeters. And now we have one with a hole and one with a locator. And now that we have our two pieces, what I will do is in the same way as before, I will offset this face so that way the locator will fit in without being too tight. So we'll just do minus 0.1. And now we can print it and glue them together. All right, now that the pieces are done, instead of when you glue them together, you have to worry about them sliding around and rotating. Now the locator pin can just go inside and there's a little bit of wiggle room. Um, the tolerances on the actual hexagon, maybe we should have done instead of minus 0 0.1, 0 0.05 or something. Uh, but now we can glue these together And now that they're glued, no wiggle at all, no sliding. You don't have to worry about that at all. All right, so there you have it. You got a bunch of different ways that you can put multi-part prints together. You can do magnets, 
You can do threaded inserts, you can do dovetails, you can do locator pins, and there's plenty of other ways, but those are the ones I use when I do my designs. If you have a way that you like to put multi-part designs together, leave it in the comments. If you learned something, leave a like, and remember, subscribing keeps your prints buttery smooth. I'll see you in the next one.